Hey guys, Dr. Robert Fredrickson here. I got my one month old son named Baby Brooks. Isn't he cute? So I just wanted to quickly get on it. I just wanted to um, go over a presentation that I created. It's called The Need for Greens. And basically what we're talking about here is typically in the standard American diet, it's very hard to get the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables. And now more than ever, the importance of foundational health is, is key. So I'm gonna go over what's happening with our current state of health, what we can do about it, and a few products that I like to help fill the gaps. All right, here we go. So the need. About 90% of Americans don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. The most recent edition of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends that adults consume 1.5 to 2 cups of fruit and 2 to 3 cups of vegetables per day. They also include potatoes as a vegetable. We also know that according to CDC's data, only 12% of Americans are actually getting the recommended um, the dietary allowance of standard of fruit and 9.3% of Americans are getting the standard uh, amount for vegetables. And on average, the report adds Americans are eating fruit once per day and vegetables 1.7 times per day. But again, they're, they are including potatoes as a vegetable. So vegetables, fruit, and disease. Everyone knows we should be eating more fruits and vegetables, but we usually don't get enough. One of the studies I want to reference is a study, uh, the, basically this nurse's study. This was a study done by Farvin and colleagues. They followed over 90,000 women for 22 years. And they found that women who ate at least three servings of fruit in adolescence had a 25% lower risk of developing breast cancer later in life. They also noted individuals who had, who ate 5.5 servings a day compared to 2.5 servings per day had an 11% higher reduction in chance of developing breast cancer. So another meta-analysis of over 460,000 people showed that vegetable and fruit consumption results in a less chance of developing cardiovascular disease. They also noted that an additional 4% reduction for every additional serving that was added per day. So why is consuming fruits and vegetables so hard? Well, one, it takes time. Um, it takes a lot of time to cook, prepare, and peel. Uh, that's why a lot of people like to order takeout or order something a little bit faster. Some people have certain taste aversions. They don't like certain fruits or vegetables, and so they won't eat it at all. One of my friends, for instance, he hates all green vegetables. He never has eaten a green in his life. He hates the taste. He's got a certain taste aversion. Seasonal variability. Some foods just aren't available, you know, all year round. So it makes, you know, food sourcing hard. Um, when you travel, it's very hard to get access to healthy foods. And the healthy foods that are available are usually super expensive, which makes it even more unrealistic to actually eat while traveling. And then we get into digestion issues. Some people have issues with absorbing nutrients because they get bloating, gas, discomfort, yeah, etc. Some people just don't have enough space. They like, hey, I am completely full of my refrigerator. I have no more space. Right now with our young baby, we have a lot of breast milk that my wife is um, pumping right now. So we, we don't have a lot of space in our refrigerator either. And then last, but probably the most important one is the cost. Eating healthy costs money. Getting organic fruits and greens and vegetables, it costs a lot. The organic produce aisle, you know, it costs, it's, it costs a fortune to eat healthy. And so the standard American diet is even sadder than we thought. So we call the standard American diet the sad. 63% of America's calories come for refined and processed foods because they're easily available. 25% of America's calories come from animal-based foods. 12% of America's calories come from plant-based foods. And half of the plant-based calories, 6%, come from french fries. So the study done by the Government Health Surveys looked at 44,000 people between 1999 and 2016. They found that Americans get a disproportionately high amount of their energy from low-quality carbohydrates. Refined grains, fruit juice, and potatoes accounted for 21.2% of energy intake. Foods and drinks with added sugars like soda accounted for another 14.4%. Fruits, vegetables, and disease. So reduced risks of heart disease, hypertension, and some cancers. 
this alone should make you want to eat more fruits and vegetables. Uh, fruits and vegetables, they're full of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Um, and also some, some vegetables that fight cancer are the cruciferous fa uh, family, like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, kale. So a product that I really like is called Indigo Greens. It's one of the only products that I found that's certified organic. A lot of these green drinks aren't organic. It's a long process to get a product completely organic. What I like about this product, it's got a wide range of organic fruits, vegetables, and grasses, giving you lots of variety. It is FODMAP compliant, meaning these have been hand-picked fruits and vegetables to not cause any gastric discomfort. There's no added sugar, and it's a class three product, meaning it's safe for pregnancy, including breastfeeding or pregnant women. So microbiome diversity. So diversity is limited in the standard, standard American diet. Our gut microbiome needs diverse phytonutrients every single day. Broccoli, kale, collard greens, spinach, beets, pumpkin, pomegranate, spirulina, and colorella aren't typically eaten every day. Most people aren't consuming the necessary plant variety, therefore they're not getting the uh, beneficial microbiome diversity. For instance, hunter-gatherer populations are reported to have encountered around 200 unique plant species a year in their diet. And that was also due to seasonal availability. We have a lot of these fruits and vegetables available all the time, and we're not getting anywhere close to 200. So we talked about FODMAPs. So FODMAPs stand for fermentable, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. What these are is they're a group of short chain carbohydrates that can be problematic because they are rapidly fermented by bacteria in the gut. These notoriously cause gas, bloating, and other discomforts. So the indigo greens product that I just mentioned is FODMAP compliant. Safe for pregnancy and breastfeeding. This is when our son was first born. This is baby Brooks right here. He's such a cute, he's actually one month old today. But my wife has been using indigo greens as well, and she loves it because she has a hard time cooking right now with the newborn baby and our loud three-year-old that you probably hear in the background. So I get asked all the time, well, shouldn't we get most of our nutrients from food? And I totally agree with that. Unfortunately, it's very hard to do so in today's world, like we just described. So I went through every organic ingredient inside of indigo greens, and I did a price analysis. Now, honestly, you probably, probably would never buy all these individual, but I just wanted to give you a frame of reference. So all these ingredients have been certified organic, and I found their competitors. So if you went, for instance, Bob's Red Mill Organic Quinoa, 16 servings was eleven sixty nine for only 16 servings. Organic banana powder. 22 servings, $24.99. Organic orange fruit powder, $4.99. Organic kale, organic raspberry, pineapple, pomegranate, broccoli powder, etc. That's only page one. Page two shows organic spirulina, $19.99 for 45 servings. Organic cholera, organic collars, parsley, kale, etc. So if you were to buy all of those individual products and put them all together, it would cost you $270.10. Indigo greens cost you $54.70. That's a $215 savings, okay? And it's going to be very easy to put in a smoothie or a beverage of choice. So the current health environment that we're in right now in 2020 with the coronavirus is lower metabolic reserve equals high, higher vulnerability to disease. Metabolic reserve is basically our body's ability to adapt and overcome disease or illness. Now is not the time to find out if you have a low metabolic reserve. A low metabolic reserve makes you, makes you more vulnerable to getting sick. So now more than ever, robust immune systems are crucial. Buffering capacity is important, and the importance of prevention is now bigger than ever. So keeping these foundational health principles in line is going to help us for the next pandemic or just for the next you know, time of stress. We need to have foundational principles daily that should probably include some fruits and vegetables. And so this is the product that I like. It's called Indigo Greens. Of course, I'm saying eat more fruits, eat, eat more vegetables. But if you can't, use a product like Indigo Greens to help supplement the gaps. So Indigo Greens is available through healthcare providers only. It's available through independent pharmacists. If you're interested in this product and you don't have a provider near you, let me know in the comments where you're located. Maybe we can find a provider that we can help get this product to you. And of course, if you have any questions over this, please let me know. Indigo Greens is a great tasting berry 
flavored greens drink that doesn't taste grassy, certified organic. It's something that I use daily in my fiber drink to help with my gut health. So if you have any questions, again, let us know. Hope you enjoyed this video and subscribe to your videos. If you like stuff like this, if you like health content, fitness, nutrition, let us know. That's what we're about here. Thank you again. Have a great day.